Ten years ago, it was a very different future than I think it is today for a person with Parkinson's disease. I think there's hope on the horizon, and it's certainly my hope as part of the process, that we will see real significant change when it comes to Parkinson's disease research and the lives of a person with Parkinson's moving forward. Hi, my name is Dr. James Beck. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at the Parkinson's Foundation. When it comes to the long-term outlook of where research is going relative to the life of a person with Parkinson's disease, I see it has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. When I began my role with the Parkinson's Foundation, I saw a lot of effort when it came to clinical research that was really focusing on broad understandings of what might go wrong inside of a cell. They were nothing unique or specific to Parkinson's disease. They were something that could be applied to ALS, to Alzheimer's, to other neurodegenerative diseases. And unfortunately, and maybe not surprisingly, they all failed. We have yet to see an advancement that actually halts or slows Parkinson's disease. Fast forward to now. And what we see is a greater understanding of the basic biology of Parkinson's disease. Fundamentally, what is going wrong in the cells and creating this neurodegenerative disease. And I see the insights and the ingenuity of the scientists we're funding trying to take advantage of that knowledge and lead that into a different direction to potentially stop or halt Parkinson's disease. The field is changing and we are starting to go these other routes where we are thinking about the role of the gut, the role of infection, the role of environmental exposures and how that could be contributing to Parkinson's disease. In the last few years, there's been a rise in the interest of studying non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. So I think that scientists have realized finally that Parkinson's disease is not only a motor complication, but there's a lot of non-motor symptoms that are sometimes equally or more debilitating than motor symptoms, and they often appear earlier in the disease. Another important thing is that there's a lot of effort into collaborative research. Researchers have realized that doing collaborative science is really important and it allows for more reproducibility and it accelerates the discoveries. I think what's really exciting that over the last years some understanding of causal mechanisms is really progressing and I think with some developments about the brain, about blood, about the gut even, we are understanding better and better what is really going wrong. Also because of technology we are more and more able to translate the research and the therapies from the hospitals into the home situation. I think that's also very exciting and promising that we are slowly really understanding what's happening in their daily life instead of only during the doctor visit. AI has had a transformative impact on biological research. For example, tools such as AlphaFold or large language models have really transformed our knowledge of protein structure and design. AI is playing a role at a very early stage for helping to understand how proteins fold. AI is also beginning to play a role in analyzing data sets and trying to understand, using limited information, what predictions we can make based upon that. It's still early days, and I think we will see some more progress in the next couple of years where AI will begin to have a larger role in the impact of not only the researchers we're funding, but within pharma space as well. Ten years ago, it was a very different future than I think it is today for a person with Parkinson's disease. I think there's hope on the horizon, and it's certainly my hope as part of the process, that we will see real significant change when it comes to Parkinson's disease research and the lives of a person with Parkinson's moving forward, where they might be able to move from Parkinson's disease being a disease that's a continually chronic degenerative condition to one that maybe becomes just a chronic disease, much like diabetes, something that can be managed or maintained, and hopefully one that could even stop its progression entirely, or one that could even be prevented as a profile access for people who are at risk for Parkinson's disease. So I think that's where we're going when it comes to research.